Hello Braff Leaders, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Silica City, this new city that the government of Guyana is building here in Guyana. Now apparently Silica City was the idea of the president, that is Dr. Irfan Ali, when he was a Minister of Housing way back in the previous iteration of this government, this administration, right? So sometime in 2013, I believe. And he is now in a position to implement that idea. But we don't even know what this city is going to be. So I'm going to spend a few minutes examining the little that we know, in spite of the fact that it's been a while since this idea was announced. I showed you in a previous um, video that is uh, during Mashamani celebration, there were parades or floats uh, that depicted the vision of Silica City. That is the float from the Ministry of Housing had um, various three-dimensional displays of what Silica City is likely to look like and there's all this talk in the media about it but there's no white paper out there there's no hard and fast um, data information about Silica City so in light of this paucity in light of this lack of hard information I want to examine why I think Silica City so far is unimpressive so here are the three reasons why I think Silica City is unimpressive one is because I don't think the location, right, the geography, the location, I don't think it's been thought out carefully. Two is I don't think there's enough um, planning for waste disposal, water, and energy. And three is I don't think there is enough um, planning for things like internet connectivity that would make it a smart city. So Silica City is being described as a smart city in tropical Guyana that um, the president is proposing is going to be, you know, a environmentally friendly city. So the whole idea behind Silica City is so that they could move the capital city from Georgetown where the coast is below sea level, it's about seven feet below sea level, to an interior location where the ground is much much higher so they've chosen a location near to Timiri for the um, new city Silica City this location is in fact very close to Kurukururu which is an old um, community built by the previous government that is the Burnham government in the 1970s right there's not a lot of information out there on Silica City so it's impossible for me to give you a complete and honest opinion of what is to come. However, what I've seen so far is not impressive and unfortunately I don't have um, confidence based on what has been built so far both in terms of infrastructure and in terms of the low-cost housing that are being built. I have no confidence that this is going to be any different from the, medioc the mediocrity that has become normal in Guyana. So where am I coming from? What is Silica City? Silica City is an idea that apparently originated from the president, Dr. Irfan Ali, when he was Minister of Housing. And now they are implementing this idea about of building a new city. Now, building a new city is not a bad idea. It's not, in fact, something that's been done over and over again in, in recent times. Brazil did it, they actually built Brasilia to replace um, cities on the coast basically to move their seat of government uh, away from the coast. So they built the city of Brasilia in the middle of the Amazon jungle. And so building a new city in Guyana to get away from the ocean, which is, you know, at the um, coast of Guyana, the, the coastal level, the, coast, the coastal land is about seven, feet below sea level and so Georgetown is at risk of somehow um, in the age of climate change and sea level rise Georgetown is in the um, in danger of being inundated being flooded by the sea so moving the city from Georgetown the center of the city that is the center of government the capital city from Georgetown to somewhere um, deeper into the country where the ground is higher is in fact a great idea and moving it to Tamari for that reason is also not necessarily a bad idea because Tamari is about seven, 25 uh, meters above sea level right so Tamari is about 75 feet above sea level 
So we're moving into the hilly sand and clay belt region. So Temeri is part of the um, Guyana's territory that is covered mainly with white sand, right? A lot of the sand trucks that bring white sand for construction around the coast, along the coast, bring it from that part of the country, right? The Linden Suzdek Highway. So the idea of building a new city is not new, right? It's very, very old, goes back very several decades and been done before. The problem is in this day of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you have people like Akon building a city in Africa, which he calls um, what Acon City, and he's going to use Bitcoin. He's going to use Acon, Acoin as the currency for that city. We have MBS in Saudi Arabia building a new city, which is called the Giga Line, or um, which is a city built along a, a line. So these are futuristic cities. And those of you who've been to um, Singapore, you know, seen that you can build a city, a compact city in a, a city state that takes advantage of. A lot of the modern um, advances in technology, right, both in terms of security, in terms of stacking residents so that you can go build up higher and get more people into a smaller um, country in terms of square miles. So building a new city, building a lot of cities is nothing, is nothing new. But in the age of cryptocurrency, where China, for example, can build a new city every month. Remember during the pandemic, China actually built a new couple of hospitals, two new hospitals in the space of two weeks, right? This is the age in which we can build using technology um, to satisfy our wildest dreams, right? We can build futuristic cities. So when I hear the idea of um, Silica City being a smart city in tropical Guyana, my imagination goes wild. However, what I see coming out of the um, government releases in the media, there's very, very little. Right. And so this is where my first criticism begins in the age where smart city means something different to what um, the government is putting out there. I question whether they understand what um, is possible and what could be built. So where is Silica City located? Silica City is going to be located near to Kura Kururu. So Kura Kururu is an old um, community that was built during the Burnham administration during the 1970s I believe or before and there's a Kurukuru um, college there there is a community that already exists so if you're gonna build a city and as I understand it they have found 38,000 acres of vacant land to build this city why would you build it on top of a old neighborhood an old Kurukuru cooperative college that actually has a stamp of the um, the Burnham era of city planning in fact which was not very careful or haphazard and in fact was haphazard so why wouldn't you find a place that is pristine that allows you to build from scratch that allows you to build a futuristic city where you don't have to uh, be hemmed in or prevented from doing all you want to do by existing um, infrastructure you know you can build everything new so that was my first criticism. Why would you build this new city, Silka City, at Kurukururu? The second thing is, when you plan a city, when you're building a new city, those of you who've done high school geography know that there are certain things you need to consider. Cities are built over um, decades and centuries due to certain um, features in geography that make a place ideal for building a city. So for example, if there's a river, there are lots of cities that are built along the coasts you know, to take advantage of ports. There are cities that are built along a river that take advantage of water. There are cities that are built um, near mining um, deposits. So you got mining towns. Linden is one such city, you know. But what is there at Kurukururu that lets you build a city that makes it advantageous to build a city? Why would people simply want to move? It's like, you know, they build a city of Brasilia in the middle of the Amazon jungle, but nobody really wants to live in the middle of the Amazon jungle. So cities like, um, like uh, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo are much more popular in Brazil than Brasilia. And this is exactly what's gonna to happen to this same city. All right, so but the, the geography does not necessarily um, suggest that this would be an ideal place to build a city, except for the fact that it's you know, 25 meters above sea level. What are the other features that would make you wanna build a city there? I'm gonna throw up some, um, some Google Maps um, images of the location. I'm going to show you what this location presents. So what you can see is that this location, Kurukuru, is about 25 
uh, I don't know, about 50 kilometers from, from Georgetown. So it's about an hour's drive from Georgetown, the capital city. It's about 19 minutes, 20 minutes drive from Timeri Airport. And you can see it's located off the Linden Susaic Highway, just where the road bends, you know, south of this location, the uh, highway turns towards um, Linden. So it's probably about, I don't know, half an hour from Linden. So why would, why would you put a city there, right? It's close to the airport, which is, I guess, an advantage. But where are you going to get the water from? Which brings me to the next question. So you're 25 meters above the sea level. Have you made consideration for things like water, sewage disposal, that's waste disposal, and energy, you know, gasoline and, and cooking gas and so on you need, that homes will need, right? So I don't see that any consideration was made for things like water, waste disposal, sewage disposal, sewage treatment plants, and, um, and waste, you know, these, these landfills, for example, where, where are you going to put the garbage, right? If you're going to build a city, and some people tell me this city is being built for a million plus people, although the information that's in the, the media so far released by the government says that they're going to build a city so far for 12,500 families or 50,000 residents. So 50,000 residents is not a city. 50,000 residents is a small town or a village, right? So the second thing that is not impressive, other than the location which I question, is that I don't see the infrastructure or the, the potential to build a city for a million people. And when in fact what they're going to be building is a city for 12,500 families or 50,000 residents, I can see that that is probably what it will be in the end, right? It's a mediocre plan. There is no, there's no real, um, there's no real explanation of the issues that need to be considered. If you're going to build a city for a million plus residents, which is what you should be doing if you're building a new city now, and if you're building a smart city, not just smart because it uses um, environmentally friendly sources of energy, so it uses clean energy. Apparently that is what the government means when it says they're building a smart city, they're gonna use clean energy. Okay, but the demand for energy of a, by a million people, million residents, has to, is, is going to supersede um, solar power or wind power. You're gonna need things like um, nuclear power. You're gonna need uh, hydro power. You're gonna need several sources of power in the energy mix. And there is no consideration for where all of this power is gonna come from to supply a million residents, right? But for now, I think people are talking, I mean, the government is saying it's 12,500 homes. I think that is probably the capacity of what is going to be built there because I don't see the potential for a million plus residents in Kurukururu. The second thing is, what are you going to do about sewage treatment? If you, if you are going to get water, groundwater, let's say you're going to get water from uh, wells you dig in the ground, the sewage is going to have to be treated. And guess what? When you treat sewage, it produces waste, a lot of chemical waste, a lot of toxic waste eventually seeps into the ground and contaminates your groundwater. So unless you have a separate plan for managing sewage and treatment of vast amounts of sewage, then I question whether in fact you can separate your sewage effluence, the waste from your sewage treatment from the groundwater where you probably will end up getting your water. Now let's say you pipe the water in from from the Demerara River, which in this case is about 20 minutes away, you know, I don't know, 20 miles away or so. How are you going to make sure that water is purified before it gets to taps, right? I don't see any plans, any, any details in the media so far about how the government plans to take care of water and sewage, which are very, very important utilities and facilities that you need for a new city of a million residents or so, right? So I have to say that I'm not impressed. I am not impressed because what I see around me going up in Guyana right now are um, boxes of uh, box homes, which are, they're calling um, cheap or uh, reasonably priced homes, right? These are homes that are supposed to be sold to the average Guyanese people, and those homes look like chicken coops, right? Really um, ridiculously low quality and standard or vision for what um, affordable homes should look like or, or should be. And when I hear them talking about building 12,500 homes and they're going to start building that in 2023, I'm thinking in my mind about these 
ugly chicken coop homes that are being built right now and being marketed as as, um, as affordable homes for Guyanese, right? Really ridiculous. So I am not impressed by the location. I am not impressed by the planning for the um, water and the utilities and the energy use the city is going to um, require. And finally, I am not I am not impressed by what seems to be implied by a smart city. As far as I am concerned, a smart city is a futuristic city that not only deals with um, clean energy, uh, clean sources of power, but it also has to be internet connected. It has to be wired you know, to the internet so that even your, your homes and your security systems are monitored, um, let's say from your cell phone, right? You can get a smartphone to monitor all your appliances. You can get so all of this requires a satellite network. You, you also you, you need to be able to connect everybody to fast satellite networks. I expect that transportation in a smart city will be done by um, you know these car, driverless cars, you know robots basically. You you need a, a city that allows you to communicate to, to connect these um, robot cars, you know these smart cars, around um, the city and through the network of roads via the internet and via satellite. So I can't imagine if you're building a smart city in Guyana, but you don't have a satellite network to supply the connectivity, the internet connectivity that you're going to need. Now I imagine you could probably um, buy some bandwidth from Elon Musk's uh, satellite network. You know, there, there are other ways to get connectivity but I don't see anything in the news and the media about how this city is going to get connectivity to make it a smart city you can't have a smart city without internet connectivity so for all those reasons guys I am not impressed by this whole idea of Silica City being a smart city I'm not impressed with what has been released so far in the media and I'm not I'm concerned that it's the same kind of mediocrity that is playing out that is being built in terms of infrastructure in Guyana so as far as I'm concerned it is a no-go for now. Now I expect to have more information as time goes along. People have told me that oh they've hired a new firm from South Korea to do the planning and the designs. I don't know what this firm is and I don't know what the work is but if you guys have more information about this, about this who, who this new firm is that is going to be hired to build Silica City or to, to do the planning for Silica City, leave them in the comments below, let us discuss it. But as far as I'm concerned, the information that's being released so far about Silica City is unimpressive. I am not. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm not optimistic that it will turn out to be less <clears throat> um, mediocre than what is currently playing out in terms of development in the country. And I believe that we need to hold the government accountable because the billions of dollars we're earning from oil and gas cannot be squandered um, on half-baked ideas such as this Silica City. Now everybody's excited about it. I'm sure it's something to be excited about, but at so far, I don't think the depth of planning and the, and the quality of communication to, to let Guyanese know what Silica City is all about has been made because very, very little information is there in the media. As soon as I get more information, I'd be happy to share it. If you can find more information, you want to share it with me, let me know. If you want to, if you are in part of the planning of this city and you want to come on my channel and, and explain to the Guyanese people what this is all about. I'd be happy to have you on, but so far I have to say I give it a 1 out of 10, right? It's, it's really, really down there in terms of the quality of communication, in terms of the ideas that are being advanced, and in terms of what uh, I see in the media so far about Silica City. So that's my assessment about Silica City, guys. So far I think it has a thumbs, thumbs down from me, uh, two thumbs down. What do you think about Silica City from what's out there in the media. A city for 12,500 families and 50,000 residents is not a city. It is in fact a small town or a village and I would be happy to see anyone who has more information to contradict what I'm predicting so far of a really really bad idea and what in fact could be we have the potential to be something as impressive as the line, the Giga line that's being built um, in Saudi Arabia or the cities that are being built in Dubai and the United Arab Emirates or in Singapore or in parts of Asia they're still building cities um, hard and fast what do you think guys share your comments in the, in the, in the uh, share your views in the comments below let people know let me know what you think about Silica City what you've heard so far and let people know what's happening here in Georgetown Guyana later